Sergio Corbucci's 1966 film of Django first came across my eyes a few years ago in the wake of one of the personal Sergio Leone revisitings I do every now and again. I had just finished two or three of Leone's wonderful spaghetti fables when this one arrived in my mailbox, almost by surprise. It was sort of an afterthought. And I guess it kind of remained one. The truth is, until this recent screening, I didn't remember much about the film except the exceptionally inspired opening sequence where the film's eponymous hero, played by Frank Nero, drags a coffin across the desert and saves a whore from being burned at the stake by a bunch of bandits. This surreal flourish by Django's coffin hauling set against the backdrop of a desiccated western cum italiano landscape while the Italian Tex-Mex theme song blares was promising indeed. And the promise is kept alive, more or less, during the first act while Django sets up shop in the local whorehouse and, aided by the contents of his coffin, eliminates the tyrannical outlaws in grand genre fashion. But once he joins forces with the Mexican banditos for a gold robbery, using a whore cart as a Trojan horse, the story loses focus. The promise of the surrealist myth falls to the wayside, and the picture gets mired in more than its share of maudlin scenes that ultimately function as a sort of insult to Clint Eastwood's stoic cinematic integrity. Jangro falls in love with the horror he saved, and as he attempts to avenge the death of a past love, he gets indelibly entangled with the warring Mexican and American bandits. All of this to wonderful photography and terrible, awful dubbing. But what I sense, <laughs> but what I sense most in this picture was the absence of the kind of mythological underpinnings of Leone's beautiful films. Pile on top of that, the culminating showdowns and plausibility, inspired by Django Reinhardt's real-life triumph over his finger paralysis, or not, it all solidifies the picture as an amusing but pretty forgettable work, which, as a cheap production conceived to capitalize on Leone's fistful of dollar success, is all its filmmakers probably could have expected and thought would happen anyway. And originally, the film was renowned for its violence which by today's standards seems pretty tame, but because of the forthcoming Django Unchained, it will live here and forever after as a footnote in the cinema history books as one of the trash culture delicacies appropriated by collage artist extraordinaire Quentin Tarantino. All of this, for better or worse. For, for better or worse, and for what it's worth. And for most folks, I probably would recommend this film only after seeing Sergio Leone's entire catalog twice. Strike that. Watch it three times. And then maybe go and take a look at this film. But for all of you hipsters out there who are keen on besting your ironic mustached friends at the QT oh. movie reference drinking games, have at it. You'll see a scene from Reservoir Dogs that's sure to catapult you. Yes! Cut that's sure to catapult you to the top echelons of your Williamsburg status. <laughs> oh, I was totally going to mention that. I'm glad you did first, Joe. <laughs> What's that? The hipster ironicism? No, no, no. <laughs> the, uh, the missing ear. Oh, the, the ear, the ear cutting bit. Yeah, there you go. Uh, caught in the middle, stuck in the middle with you, right? Yep. <laughs> Yes, exactly. There you go. Every, the more films you watch, the more the more you'll find uh, more scenes from Tarantino you'll find in their original uh, in their original vintage. So uh, yeah, I think this puts me at odds with you too. Again, uh, Dave, what what you you really dug this film, huh? You know what, man? The the opening was gr was great, and the first act was great, and then it seemed like it kind of kind of meandered a little bit. What what are you thinking over there, bro? I, I agree with you. You, you know, I, I, I mean, the opening is is so strong, right? I mean, that theme music right. is brilliant, and and the the opening bits and just seeing like like Django being a real hard ass and you know showing up in this town and and just yeah. wrecking everybody's shit, it's great. Um, but yeah, then it, it kind of meanders, right? And it falls apart, uh, I think, and never really, it never really feels. As, as epic as it was building up to be in the beginning. Right, right. Well, it seemed like it was so clearly and beautifully conceived, that opening sequence, and then it sort of feels like it got a little bit messy. And, I, you know, I did a little bit of uh, Wikipedia-ing and a little bit of research and what I could in the past day or two that we had to prepare here, and I saw that they they 
um, sort of didn't have a script written while they went into production on this, and it, it kind of looked like a, it kind of looked. It, it appeared to me like maybe this was like, wow, uh, this fistful of dollars did a, a ton of business. We better get on the bandwagon, you know. And 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 the film kind of represents that. I I think anyway. Yeah, I'm. I well, again, this is back to sort of. I in general have tried many times i'm trying to write a western script actually and i keep getting recommended spaghetti westerns and i just i really don't like them they're the character development is extremely lacking it doesn't have the vision of a fellini and uh i mean while being highly stylized and having some really sort of beautifully gruesome death scenes like it just it doesn't it doesn't hit me the right way um so uh, this one I mean, even from the beginning, it is a great opening scene, but Django does nothing. He just is. He's almost like a piece of scenery, I think. Like, he just, he really, you know, he's being a stubborn dickhead the whole time. And you're you're just like, why, why, why don't you want any help? Why aren't you explaining to anyone what's going on? Like... Yeah. You know, it, it just like I don't know. It, it drives me batty. It, like I feel like this is some Italian sitting around smoking hash or drinking too much espresso or something. Be like, dude, wouldn't it be cool if somebody had a machine gun in a coffin? You know, like it, it just <laughs> it doesn't turn into a whole story for me ever, and I, I never get excited about the characters. And there there is a hell of a lot of you know women getting hit in spaghetti westerns, like a lot. Uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Would, oh, but, um, I mean, I think what you have going on in these spaghetti Westerns and, and the, the great thing about the Sergio Leone films is, you know, the, the first three fistful of dollars, fistful of dynamite, I think it went. And then, uh, the good, the bad and the ugly. Is that right? Is that, is that right on Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that they're called basically the the man with no name trilogy. You know, yeah. and what what you have there is basically these. Um, you know, they they're they're working on these hero myths. You know that that have been present for forever. And you know, when you don't name your 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 character, it just invites you to project into it, or you know, it it asks you about the mystery of the hero and and what makes the hero tick. You you know, and and there's that sort of uh, American Western stoicism that I think evolved out of you know the John Ford pictures with you very know, John uh, Wayne. Yeah, the John Wayne, you know, and that that's that's there, there's nothing better than the American West to set these uh, hero myths against. Dave, how are you feeling about the spaghetti westerns? I lo- okay, I gotta say, Raina, I I really enjoy them, uh, yeah. <laughs> but but you're right. I mean. And 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 Jenna's right, definitely to a certain extent. They're they're very much uh, about style. Uh, <laughs> they're very much about hey, we're you know we're gonna we're gonna kill a lot of people, and we're going to have some some do some neat cinematography, and we're gonna have some neat scenes, um, but not necessarily all of it uh, turns into great filmmaking. Uh, right. You know the 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 Leone stuff is is probably the some of the best examples you're going to see of the spaghetti western. Right. Like I think <laughs> right. those are like the 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 sort of the the hallmarks. Yeah, I mean that first trilogy is just oh, so I good. I love it. I mean I just love and, it. And you like know? you know films like Once Upon a Time in the West and and things right. stuff like that are really really great. Um, I think when you get into like the Corbucci stuff and mm-hmm. and and some of the more uh, you know obscure Italian westerns, um, you know, there's a reason I think that some of them are obscure, uh, <laughs> and that they're just they're just not great, right? They're not great films. They they may have moments that they may have, you know, like the the intro of, of, of Django here that that are like wow, that's a really inspired piece of filmmaking. Um, but you know the rest of it never really seems to come together, and I think a lot of it, um, a lot of it, as Corbucci especially in, in, in his output, I mean he he was making this is before Sam Peckinpah, right? So mm-hmm. so the violence in in these movies is like holy shit, like like for its time, I mean yeah, you might have a movie where you know a few people get shot and whatever else, but in a in a Corbucci movie, it was like 
men. Everybody gets shot. Fucking everybody, like everybody's getting their ass smoked in this movie. Right. I I mean, this is made in the mid '60s, so you know, coming from the horror perspective, I mean, you had Italian, the Italian horror cinema was starting to crop up right around then too, wasn't it? Dave? Mario Bava, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Mario Bava, and then uh, we did a show on um, Argento and the other dude, uh, Fulci, right? Well, they, they're the... well, they're a little bit later, but not that much, yeah. All right, so I mean that's sort of kind of coinciding, and yeah, you're right, Dave. I mean that that one scene uh, where he gets, you know, he gets pummeled and, and brutalized. Yeah. Is, yeah, it's pretty. I actually, pretty, I actually and, could hardly watch that myself. Right. Yeah, that was and, right. hard. That was a tough watch, and 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 just stuff like like again when the you know when the when the majors got sort of the the Mexicans doing the run, you know, and he's just yeah shooting them and it's just like they're just animals to him you know and they they cut a guy down and you know right in front of his kids yeah you know that kind of stuff it 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 really shows this uh you know this grim ugly side of the american west that i'm sure is a lot closer to the truth than what we might see in a more polished western Right, right, right. Of course, or or the more tame westerns of the forties and fifties. Yeah, that definitely. Right. I mean, you know, you're you're kind of polished, you know, John Wayne kind of western. Yeah, I, those fights in that in those old westerns, you know, Jenna. I mean, they, they were like. <laughs> yeah, almost... no, I've, I've, yeah, I've seen them. I, I, you know, again, I go back to the Searchers, though. I think that's like a brutal movie. You don't see a lot of it on screen, but like what is what is going on in that movie is incredibly. And in fact, after I while I was watching it, I'd convinced myself that I didn't like it. And then it's like when it ended, I thought about it for like the next three days. And I was like, this is an amazing piece of cinema. Actually, I really like it. Yeah, well, I mean that. There you go, another stoic hero whose past is sort of uncertain. But and he, he walks grows. In, he, he changes over the movie. Well, yes, yes, because he's got. Um, he goes to save the uh, Debbie. Natalie I Wood. believe. Wow, it's been so long. Yeah, Natalie Wood, and uh, you know he has this whole thing with, against sa- the savages. He's got this whole anti-Indian thing going on, and he's really brutal. But then he ends up. To, Taking up with uh, with the half the half breed, right? Wow! Yeah, it's been a long I, yeah. Time I mean, ago. you know, he he wants to kill her originally, right. and he ends up giving her. I think maybe the most emotional hug I've ever seen committed to Senate. John Wayne. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. So it there's 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 brutal intimations in in Ford, but, um, you know, obviously nothing on screen and certainly nothing uh, explicit in terms of sex. I get, you know, I guess to where, where uh, Corbucci, you know, uh, didn't go where I guess the Italian horror filmmakers were, were starting to go was, you know, the TNA where, you know, <laughs> there isn't really all that much explicit sexual content, which I think probably went, would, would have gone, would have been really good to put, to really, ca- uh, you know, catapult this into the stratosphere of, uh, exploitation. Dave, what's going, what's going on in the Tarantino film as far as sexual innuendo and, and boobs and that kind of stuff? Uh, you know what? There, there, there's not a heck of a lot. <laughs> to be honest, right? It, yeah. The, the you know it's it's interesting that that women in the film and 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 maybe this is a too going a bit far, but women in the film are somewhat sidelined, mm-hmm. right? I mean, even though the film is ostensibly about you know Django going to get his wife, and the, there's a lot of really awesome romantic stuff with him and his wife and 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 it's good there's not a lot in like the the sort of titillation department right it it really sort of focuses on the romance between him and his wife Uh, you know and this is something that always puzzled me about tarantino and you know some of these other dudes who are doing these faux exploitation films which is a term i think i may have coined like hobo with a shotgun is that you know as much as they want to exploit uh the violence and you know tarantino is all about you know every sort of exploitation film nazi exploitation black exploitation you name the exploitation he tarantino's got it you know r- r- rammed down our throats but they don't do sex <laughs> 
yeah, but they don't do sexploitation. Uh, I yeah, mean, I know. A, a bit in Grindhouse, they had uh, Lo- Lindsay Lohan, I believe, had her boobies out in she the opening. She needs to be exploited more. Wait, no, wait, who? Rosemary, which one? Uh, Lindsay Lohan. Death? Uh, it was right in the beginning, it, so it must have been. Uh, Rose McGowan, yeah, you mean? Her. No, Lindsay Lohan did a ca- cameo, didn't he? Did, oh, do you no, in the Machete trailer. Machete. The trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. She ended up being in the real movie. I think. All right. Yeah, she was. Right, right. right. It's a terrible so, movie. It's not good. <laughs> it was terrible. I didn't see it. <laughs> oh, I did, I did. I saw so it. Maybe that's what I'm thinking, actually, is Machete. So instead. That's, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Well, all. yeah, Machete was like the, the trailer at the opening of Grindhouse. It was the first trailer right. they screened. Okay. And, okay. and yes, Lindsay Lohan's in that. And then she ended up being, that movie actually got greenlit, and it was not good. Hey, here's a question. Is it because Robert Rodriguez left his wife and lifetime producer for Rose McGowan? That was the mm. first movie he made after splitting up. Kind of a... Uh, Did he really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, kind of a uh, uh, Paper Moon style with uh, Peter Bogdanovich. He never made a great movie after he got divorced and left for Civil Shepherd either. I think. Oh, what about Last Picture Show? Didn't that, did that, that come was, after? Uh, that? that was before. Oh, before, he was, yeah. He was still a... with them. I think it really depends on whether you thought Rodriguez ever made a great movie to begin with. <laughs> well, here we go. Here you go, man. Here's a lesser filmmaker who's making films about other film about yeah, other movies. Yeah, and, and he right? would agree. I mean, I think he would agree. I think he would say like because I mean he's he would say himself, and I've heard him say himself in in videos uh, in in interviews that he his career is totally unexpected, right? I mean, he was just this guy making movies in Mexico. And now all of a sudden, you know, he's in Hollywood and he can do all the stuff, and he's kind of blown away by it all too. Uh, I, I know I'm baffled not by it. A I good movie. It. I'm like I I could make El Mariachi. I I could make a lot better than El Mariachi. I watching that is like mind blowing to me that like somehow that like launched someone's career. Yeah, I'm bad. I'm, yeah, I'm I mean bad you have to kind of it. yeah, I mean you have to put it into context though too. It was the early '90s, so. It was still before the, I you know, the digital revolution. was born revolution. after my time. What's that? <laughs> I knew I was born later than I should have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you got to put these things in perspective. So, I mean, here's a dude who made a no-budget film before, you know, really video, the the video digital revolution. So, I mean, that, go, that goes, a long you way. Know, yeah, it goes a long way. I mean, it gets you into Sundance when you have a 16 millimeter film like that, you know, and that and then that, that pretty much takes care of itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I thought it was interesting. They kind of tried to pull the uh, the old Greek reference where they use the Trojan horse and it was supposed <laughs> to be a cart of whores rolling into the into the fort. Bring you know, out the whores. Like, <laughs> but then after that i kind of you know those scenes like i mean i thought there were some pretty terrible you know glaring flaws in this film where you know they had their uh the mawkish kind of modeling scenes between the hero Django and um and you know the, his wife you know the the wife that he's avenging in the in the grave and the horror that he's falling in love with i mean did, did all that stuff strike you guys as like incredibly uh modeling yeah it yeah was, it was pretty forced too like it it, it was it, it was just kind of like shoehorned in a little bit and i was like well okay we're, we're gonna try and give Django here a little depth right yeah. where he really <laughs> did have a lot like let's face he it. had none you know, like, right. like I wasn't expecting a lot to be going on with Django, right? <laughs> He's just not a, there wasn't much to the dude. Yeah, I mean, you know what the thing is, is that the appeal of the of the Eastwood character, and I forgot who played it in the original Fistful of Dollars was, but, you know, there's not a lot being said about his emotions or his past or even his name, you know? And here, right off the bat, you give the, you give the character a name and then you try to, you know... I, I think what they did was try to humanize him, but 
they didn't handle it very well. So then it, it started to play off com- uh, entirely false. But what you have is in in the Eastwood is that you have this dude who's completely tight lipped and stoic. So he he presents this sense of mystery and sort of superhero, like as basically a superhero, you know, there. And I think that uh, as much as Django was so quick to pick up on some of the other genre conventions that were emerging like almost immediately you know the gunfight this stuff and this and that i mean they just didn't they didn't get that main character thing where you know it's like you know what we're gonna not we're gonna not define the main character instead you, you know we're just gonna let the main character be you know he, he they tried to define him which I, I think was ultimately ended up being sort of a faux pas here yeah it was a big mistake and and i and i think too the another sort of mistake of the film is that you know in 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 fistful of dollars and 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 those movies even if the 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 hero or i guess sort of the the anti-hero in the film was not emotional and was not you know seeming to be sort of superhuman there was a lot of humanity around it mm-hmm and and I you don't see that a lot uh, in Django here. Um, you know, there's pretty much just a lot of, of sort of unlikable, despicable people uh, around, and not a lot of people that you can you can find yourself sympathizing with very much, or or or, uh, or having some heart. They're, you know, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not. They're, they it's don't a have cruel to world much. that they live in. <laughs> right, right. You, you yeah, know, and and again, maybe that's a more, you know, that's a maybe a reflection of, of Carbucci's cynicism about the people of that time, or, or or what that is. But but they they're they're a cruel people in a cruel world, and it and it it, it in a way, I, I think there's there's very few entry points for for people like us, you know, to to come in and say, oh, okay, I I I'm gonna. I'm going to latch on to, to so-and-so. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't carefully drawn. Um, did, did you guys pick up on how quick the, uh, the gunfight, the, the shootings were? I mean, that, that's pretty <laughs> Yeah, funny. they were. Well, I honestly, I, it took like the second major massacre for me to be like, this is just a series of vignettes sort of drawn together by the fact that this dude is in all of these fights. I'm like, like uh, the first one's about to happen where he sort of like sits on his coffin and he's like, don't worry about it, guys. I'll take care of this. I'm not leaving town, you know? And I'm like, what the fuck? This is like the climax of the movie. We're only half an hour in, you know? Yeah, it, it kept yeah. happening. And I was like, what? how is there still a plot? There's no, like, th- there's no goal introduced into this entire picture. It's just a yeah. series of things strung together. I, I mean the first the first fifteen twenty minutes was really something else. I mean yeah. because it seemed like it was like a third. It seemed like it was the third act, and it was the first act. You know, yeah. And it it, it seemed a little bit topsy turvy. But I I was uh, I I totally agree with you there, Jenna. But I I was kind of referring, Dave, and I think you might picked up on it. Like you know the actual you know the quickness of the quick draw gunfights. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? Like <laughs> it's so funny. Like. Okay, so the, I mean, I'm I'm all about you know fine. We can suspend our disbelief and and believe that this guy can take out you know five dudes in a you know gunfight, no problem. Uh, but right. it was just like it was instant, like <laughs> like beyond superhuman. Uh, it was a little. Silly. It, it was almost like just a year after Leone put out his movie, they're mo- they're almost mocking the they're mocking it almost right away, like making. Yeah, fun of yeah. It. I mean, I like, I, like, I think it definitely part of it can be read as as, as almost a shot at, at, at Leone, but also it was about body counts too. Like, like I right. think Carbucci really was really wanted to like. Uh, have a high body count in these films because because I, I got like I've seen other films of his and and they're brutal like like the number of <laughs> really? people they will kill on screen is is and especially considering the time that these films are made is incredible you know yeah, no, like, nobody yeah. is safe any character can be killed at any time mm-hmm. you know the lead has you know the same chances of living through the movie as anybody else like. like <laughs> You know, you can close the film and everybody's toast. Right, right. 
And you know, that just really reminds me of the Fulci stuff, which we had just reviewed on a, a previous episode, you know? I mean, how violent and, and how, you know, anybody's work can, is fair game to die, you know? Remember that, Jenna? Yes, I do. I am not a huge fan of Fulci, but yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right, yeah. But I mean, it just remind it just kind of, this all sort of falls into the same, uh, you know, context or it does, you know gang. definitely it's you know i mean all like there's a very particular feel to italian cinema of that time and while i don't like spaghetti western somehow i still love giallos even though that has the same extreme lack of characterization <laughs> uh, for whatever reason i really dig chicks getting knifed i don't i don't know what it is yeah, uh, i mean <laughs> Look, you know, you twitch of the death nerve, and, mm-hmm. and like, oh god, it's, it's <laughs> unbelievable, right? unbelievably good. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, what is it about knives going into flesh, Jenna, that you like so much? You know, I, I don't know. Ask Freud. I'm sure it has. Penis <laughs> envy. You know this film. <laughs> uh, <laughs> before, before, do you, do you like to get like? Do you like to get violent or anything like that going on over there with your uh, when you when you have your sexual sessions? Yeah, uh, me. Yeah, I mean Max isn't here, so I gotta kind of fill in a little <laughs> you bit. You gotta of a needle me a little bit. I gotta needle you a bit. So any uh, spanking, knife action, choking? What's what's going on? Oh, uh, let's just leave that to Max's imagination. You have him on for five <laughs> minutes later, and I'm sure he could he could detail my sex life to a T. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> but you know, an interesting you know, to get back to knife and chicks here. Uh, <laughs> an interesting thing about okay. that is that you know, the giallos, I mean, are, are largely based on, on, on these pulp novels. Right. And the westerns that they were making, the spaghetti westerns were based a lot on, on similar pulp novels. Mm-hmm. And they had these lurid descriptions of, of of, you know, the the bullet or the knife in this case, you know, rending flesh and bone and, mm-hmm. and, and all this stuff. And and so I think that's where a lot of the the dramatization of the violence and the, the 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 need to sort of really accentuate the violence came from. It came right out of the descriptions in these books. That's what uh, a lot of readers were reading them for, were, were these really sort of, uh, you know, terrifying and lurid uh, depictions of violence. So, I mean, I, I, I think that's exactly where it came from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's the titillation. And actually, the, the giallo in Italian is actually means yellow, yes. which was taken directly from the yellow covers of those those books, if I'm not if I'm Yeah, that's mistaken. exactly so. right. And, and this film actually went on and had like dozens or or I think they said a hundred or something um, sequels or unofficial sequels or <laughs> whatever the case may be. The Coffin and, of Django. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and none of them had you know Frank Nero in it or were were directed by uh, Carbucci. So I think that you know a lot of what Tarantino is doing obviously is just falling into this uh, into this uh, you know this tradition of making these uh, sort of B movies. Um, you know, Un- unauthorized sequels. <laughs> unauthorized sequels with the Django name to it. So you know there you go. I mean he's he's. He's a he's a smart man. He's he's got a, he's got a lot of, of knowledge about about film history. Obviously. <laughs> hey guys, any last words on Django? I think we should probably rate this one. All right, Jenna, let's go to you first. What do you what do you got for this one? Two stars. Two stars. Yeah, not so crazy about the spaghetti western. Are you warming up to the Sergio Leone westerns at all? You know, I finally saw the good, the bad, and the ugly, which I had attempted to watch multiple times alone and had fallen asleep every time and I don't really fall asleep during movies so this was like like I'd attempted to watch it three times on my own and had fallen asleep every fucking time um <laughs> and uh but I finally saw it at film forum with an audience and its appeal was a lot more clear to me like I now understand better why people like it but I Still, am not in love with it. I enjoyed seeing it in the theater, and I think maybe the only way for me to see Leone's is to do it in the theater with other people. Well, the, the cinematography is really 
something to behold. It I mean, it's, it's beautiful. nice. He has these lovely vast shots, and it you know like that does hark to Ford a little bit. But like, I just still the the plot or the characters are just kind of read as very threadbare. And I love Eli Wallach as well, but it just I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a massive fan. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, hopefully you'll warm up to it. We, I mean, I I do like them, but you know, are you, if you're writing a western, I mean, at some point. I know. Well, you know. no, I've been watching them. That's what I'm telling you. I've been watching them, <laughs> right, and I right. still hate them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about you, Dave? Where are you falling in on this one and, you know, and westerns in general? Okay. Well, westerns in general, I I, I really enjoy them. Uh, you know, I, I I mean, especially the Italian spaghetti westerns probably has a bit to do with my upbringing or whatever but uh you know Django in particular it's tough for me it's tough because it, i i think i would give like i think i would give the 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 like first 20 25 minutes of the film like like a solid 3 right right y- you know cuz it's like wow the, it was it was really really good and and i think everything after that gets into like the two territory <laughs> for sure because it right. just it never it never delivers it starts so promising and you're like wow it's on this really high note right off the top and and it it never i don't think it ever achieves anything better than that first first quarter right right so it's yeah a bit of a disappointment. although i gotta say um, i hope people see it i hope i hope a lot more people see it i hope people who who are who are going to watch Django Unchained um, will go back and revisit this movie and and other movies in the genre because I think they all have something a bit of something to tell us about about the history of film and and it's important. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, absolutely, man. I I really love the Sergio Leone films, and I I there's something about them that I can always go back to. So I'm right with you. I think that um, anybody who goes out there and checks out the the new Tarantino film and digs Tarantino Tino sensibility, which you know obviously he's a man of great taste. I think that you should go back and and like I said in my review, go watch Django, but only after you watch Sergio Leone's uh, entire film catalog like two or three times and then then go and check and if you're and if you're in love with the genre like i am it's certainly worth worth a a, a watch so I'm, I'm i'm right there with you too dave i'm, I'm gonna give this about a say two and a half stars and you know like i said i recommend it if, you, if you're a fan of the genre all right, that wraps up our discussion of Quentin Tarantino, Django Unchained, and Sergio Carbucci's Django from 1966. Thank you, Jenna and Dave, for joining in on this gigantic mini episode. <laughs> <laughs> So much for the mini label, right, guys? I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I'll do my best Tom impersonation here and say I would like to remind everyone that you can like us on Facebook at the Cutting Room Fan Page.com and please visit us on our website. Oh, hey, guys, throw out your plugs. What you got? What do you guys got going on? Uh, Jenna, what, what's happening here? Throw out some plugs for us. Uh, well, my short films online uh, that I shot in the aftermath of Sandy and Powerless Manhattan. So if you want to check that out, you can find my site, uh, www.jenna, J-E-N-N-A, pain, P-A-Y-N-E, dot com. Uh, click on the YouTube link and you can watch Dark Town. Awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty amazing little uh, bit of history itself as far as being shot in dark New York City during, in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. And you know what, Jenna? I'm going to put that up on our website, too, in the hollaboo section. Thank so, you. I'm sorry. I've been meaning to do it myself, and it just hasn't yeah. happened. I want to get you guys up and active on the website. But uh, in the meantime, I will put it up there at uh, thecuttingroompodcast.com. Cool. Dave, tell everybody where uh, we can find you and uh, your uh, long live the new flesh blog uh well you can find me at fangoria.com uh, uh for the most part anyway uh that's where i'm doing most of my stuff and uh i guess the big thing i gotta plug this time around uh is the the newest issue of fangoria fangoria 319 uh you know it's uh it should be should be on newsstands now uh within the last couple of days at least and uh and we got uh, django unchained right on the cover and, oh, that's great! Uh, nice. And we got a whole bunch of really great uh, Django features. We got a great interview with Quentin Tarantino. 
Uh, we got a feature on uh, the special effects in the film, and we've got an exclusive essay from Quentin Tarantino himself on Sergio Corbucci. Oh, nice! So, cool. I, I'd be I'd be curious to hear what he has yeah, to say it's, about. Yeah, it's a really it's a really cool piece. Um, we actually uh, we actually have like we, we've changed a bit of the magazine to Jangoria. Uh, <laughs> to celebrate the release of the film and uh, and yeah so and and I mean there's a lot of other great stuff in the issue as well we got Tracy Lords we got some Texas Chainsaw nice uh, it's a Dave do a, do a lot of the fans give you give give Fangoria a hard time because Django's not you know typically a horror film oh my or... fucking god yeah yeah, yeah. So, if you even give them a hard time so okay here's the things we got a hard time about. Um, so on the cover, we've changed the, the Fangoria logo, um, to give it sort of like a Western look. Uh-huh. Fucking livid. Like, what'd you fucking do? To the- I bet, man. I mean, that's and, like a... Ah, uh, it, it was horrible. And then everybody's pissed because they're like, Django's a fucking Western, and why is it, uh, why is it, you're a horror movie magazine, and, and how much did they pay you, and it's, it's the same shit we get all the time. It's like, whenever <laughs> we do something that, that the fans don't like... Yeah, man, horror fans are purists, oh, man. Oh, man, it's like, they paid you, you know, what did they do, what did they do? <laughs> and, and we had it with Twilight, we, we, we reviewed we reviewed the new Twilight movie uh, on the website, and and it was like, what what did what did they pay you? And it's like, man, what pay for a two star? What are you talking about? Twilight is pure horror. It, it, I mean, yeah, well, one side of the way. That's scary, but it's hard. Anyway, that's funny, said, Jenna. You're absolutely right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, All right. Get really uh, about it. You know, it's it's it's. It's, it's crazy, and I mean, I, I, well, Joe, you know how I feel. I think the the sort of the wider lens we can have at, at looking at things, the better. So, uh, you know, I love, I love that that we're we're able to to cover a broader uh, range of things. Absolutely, and uh, I, and you know, we'll be returning to horror now and again. But it, you know what? what? Watching other films just gives us a better perspective on the horror genre, and vice versa. I mean, you know, great work, great works of cinema incorporate. I've always maintained this that they incorporate all facets of um, you know the human uh, farce or tragedy or experience. You know, you, a great work of cinema is going to have horror and terror in it by the same degree that it has humor and uh, excitement and all that other stuff in it so um, yeah so right on guys thanks again for reviewing Django and I would just want to let everybody know that we will be back with episode 25 on Thursday December 20th with the films of Fellini which uh, was a pretty um, amazing and there was some contention on that episode as well so tune in on Thursday December 20th for our coverage of Fellini and until then we are over and we are out in Tom's words ciao